Hello, it's Jonathan Bowman Perks and welcome to my favourite time of the week. And I just want to give you a little taster of what we're going to be talking about. Um, mainly it's about transforming toxic meetings. We talked about toxic teams before and that seemed to go down very well with you. So I want to talk more on that theme and I find myself involved in a lot of um, helping people facilitate great team meetings and coaching teams so they perform better. It makes a huge impact to an organization. Um, I'm gonna be talking about culture and performance, its impact on meetings. I'm gonna be talking about the mnemonic Dan's ad, about the purpose of the meeting, about appreciation, and the mnemonics WWW and EBI. AAR, after action reviews, I'm gonna be talking about that. Questions, um, cutting things down, people and time. And then finally, burning issues around before a bonus to give you a taster for what's coming next uh, about the yellow duck. So, firstly, um, when I talk to leaders in teams and I do a straw poll and I ask these leaders, uh, whatever level they're at, how much of your working day do you spend in meetings? The average is a staggering, what do you think it's gonna be? How, how much on average do you spend of your day in meetings? Have a think about it. What do you reckon? Look at your calendar, have a check on it. Do you know what the figure is? It's actually 60% of most people's day is spent in meetings. Now, in some cases it's less, in some cases it's 80% of their meetings. And that's not their day job. Their day job happens outside meetings, which means it's in the evenings, and it's at the weekends, and it's in their holidays. And that's just so wrong on many levels. The culture and performance of your organization is shaped by meetings. If you're spending 60% of your day on average in meetings, where does the leadership go on? The leadership goes on in meetings. I'm wearing my Goldsmiths Company tie because in half an hour, I'm the chairman of a meeting there and I'm going to be going to chair the meeting. Now, what have I done to prepare? What have I done about the event and what will I do when I run it? Well, the first thing is that I wanna make sure that the meeting hits the mnemonic D-A-N-S-A-D-D, Dan's ad. And so if we have an item that's in the agenda, then we need to get to the point of what's the decision? As chair, I need to come to a decision. What's the action? What's the next step? Who's gonna be accountable? And what is the delivery deadline? Dan's ad, a really great mnemonic. And many of the organizations I work with the CEOs and the leaders who run those meetings, they say, no Dan's ad, no meeting. Uh, which leads us on to the next thing. I've got to be very careful about the purpose of the meeting. So I designed my agenda for this meeting two working weeks in advance. In other words, 10 working days in advance. Many people get a meeting agenda the Sunday before a Monday morning meeting. Um, or someone just empties their in-tray on you, everything that's in their inbox, they just talk about and whatever's there, which is no value to you. It may be valuable to them, but you just find it such a drudge of a meeting. So I made a particular point of uh, working with my colleague Adam, and together we designed the agenda, checked with another colleague, Jake, to make sure that it was right, and we got it out to people in advance, particularly for those more reflective introverts in your teams, who they need to think in order to share their views rather than the extroverts who speak in order to think. Now, that's a great blunt distinction, but in many ways it's quite true. And so you want to make sure that people have equal share of the time of speaking in the meeting and you don't have some that dominate it. But if you can't, in a sentence, define the purpose of that meeting, why you get together, who is there, where they're going to add value, then it's going to be a poor meeting. So at the top of uh, my, in this case, it's a page and a half agenda, I'm very clear about the purpose of the meeting and the outcomes that we need to have. Also, I begin early in a meeting and I also end a meeting with appreciating the quality about the people who are there and the contributions that individuals have made since the last meeting that we've had. And in our case, the last meeting was some two months to three months ago. Um, when we talk about what's working well, www, and what would make things even better if, EBI. Which leads me nicely on to, I was just in a coaching session uh, with one of my clients, Peter, who I'll talk about with the yellow duck, his suggestion. And um, 
he was saying that um, their system in their organization is they have at six months and at the year they have their annual appraisal, which they are a very fast moving, successful tech company. And they're finding that's a bit clumsy. They haven't had much before because they were just a startup about five years ago. But actually what many companies and a colleague that I work with in LinkedIn, um, he said what they do is they have um, a, an app for uh, after action reviews. Whenever they're together with a client or working together with each other, they do an after action review. What worked well? what made it even better. And they can fill it in on their phones then and there while they're with each other. No more than 15 minutes. They share it with each other and then they put it in uh, and they give them a rating against, I don't know, six or eight qualities which matter about collaboration, about teamwork, about delivery, um, about emotional intelligence, whatever it might be, they score them against that. So that at any stage in the year, their manager can dip in and see how they're performing. And it's not what we call the recency effect, where they're thinking, goodness, it's a six month review. How do they do? Well, yesterday I was a bit irritated by them, but the previous five months, they might've been doing a great job, but all you remember is the most recent event. And that's not both effective nor fair. So after action reviews, uh, having some kind of appraisal and a, an ongoing system. If you do nothing else in your meetings, change your agenda items into agenda item questions. Uh, this was a piece of advice I got from Nancy Klein. Nancy taught me a lot in her book, Time to Think, about good meetings. And I think that's been the most transformational thing. How can we save 10%? How, uh, what should we do about this particular problem? So people in those 10 working days they have before the meeting have got time to think about what they can do to add real value when they come to the meeting so it's worth their while attending and everybody else finds it worthwhile. And they also can speak to their colleagues and those who work for them or friends or whatever and get the best ideas. So it's, it's essentially you're multiplying the number of people who are in the room and not wasting time of others who don't need to be there. My last couple of points is cut down. It's linked to that one I've just mentioned. Cut down the number of people who are there so those who are there really need to be there and can add value. And the rest, let them get on with their day job. They don't need to be at the meeting. And certainly don't have multiple people from one department there. Have one person who can speak on behalf of that department. And if you're a controlling freak who every decision has to be yours, that's wrong too. The person who goes to the meeting must be empowered to make decisions on your behalf. And trust them. Give them that ability to step up. And also cut down the time. Meetings, some meetings are three hours long without breaks. People lose the will to live after about 20 minutes, certainly after 40. So 40 minutes, then a five minute break, then 40 minutes. Um, and finally, people bring extra items that weren't on the agenda. They're asked for them in advance, but they never send them. Any questions that you want at the meeting, no one replies. So in the meeting, end it with 30 seconds each person with a burning issues round. What are the burning issues that we need to be discussing at the next meeting? And that gives you your agenda for the next meeting. You're not going to use all of them, but the top ones you can deal on. And so, ending finally with the yellow duck. I'll be talking about that next time. And I will have a squeaky yellow duck, thanks to Peter Ebden and his ideas about how to handle issues that fall between the cracks. So, transform your meetings, make them less toxic, start using some of these things. And if you want to be really challenged and really up your game, get in touch. Let me come and coach your team. Nice to talk to you.